Hello everybody. We're going to have a look at example four in this video. And at the beginning of this section 8.6, I said that we would learn three things in this chapter. One, we would look at power series and learn about intervals of convergence. And we already did a few examples for that. And then I also said two, we are going to learn a method of how to find power series by for new functions uh, by using what we already know about power series of old functions. That's what's going to happen in example 4a. And in example 4b, we are going to uh, investigate how good our power series are at approximating things. So we are actually going to find some estimations for function values and also look at error. OK, so let's get started. So in section 8.5, when you learned about a Taylor series, you derived the Taylor series for sine x, for the function sine x. And so you learned that you could write sine x as x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial, and so on. So you keep going and going and going. And we see the sigma notation for this series up in the box, and we also have the written out terms right here. And um, we didn't compute the interval of convergence, but if you did that using the methods that we um, learned in the previous few examples, you would find out that the interval of convergence is the entire real line. So the series approximation works for all values of x, the entire real line. You could use a similar method um, that you used in with Taylor series to also find the power series for cosine x. Uh, note the similarity. Cosine x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial and so on. So there's a definite similarity to the power series of the sine function. The sine function is alternating the cosine function is alternating, the power series is alternating, and sine picks out the odd powers of x. So here we have an x to the 1 and then x cubed, x to the 5th, x to the 7th, x to the 9th, and so on. And the cosine power series picks up the even powers of x. 1 really is x to the 0, and then you have, so this would be x to the 0, and then you have x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, x to the 8th, and so on. And the power series expansion for cosine x is also valid for all values of x, any real number. We haven't found the power series expansion for e to the x yet, but again, using Taylor series, you could go ahead and do that, and you would find that that is a very nice expansion. It combines the sine and cosine ones, um, but it's not alternating. It's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and so on. And it's also valid for all real numbers. And finally, another power series that's going to come in handy is to look at 1 over 1 minus x. And that is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and so on. And that is only valid for x values between minus 1 and 1. And really what we are looking at here, you can view as um, a geometric series because you have the common factor of x. And we already know that the common ratio of x. And we already know that a geometric series only converges for values between minus 1 and 1. So you could go back and convince yourself that this power series expansion works and is equal to 1 over 1 minus x because we have a is equal to 1 and r is equal to x. So with a equal to 1 and r equal to x. Now these are 
four very nice power series that we can use to come up with power series expansion for a bunch of different series. And that's what we're going to do in example for a. We're going to find a power series for f of x equal to e to the minus x squared. And how do we do that? Well, you can notice that f of x is equal to e to the minus x squared. It's not exactly e to the x, but it looks like something has been plugged into e to the x. The power right here, minus x squared, has been plugged into the function e to the x. And so um, we can use what we see here. This looks like e to the x with minus x squared replacing the x, the exponent. We have a function composition going on here. And so we can find the power series expansion for e to the minus x squared by taking the power series for e to the x and instead of plugging in x, we are plugging in minus x squared. We are substituting minus x squared into this function, into this power series. So let's see what that looks like. We have 1 plus, so e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. Everywhere I see an x, I'm just going to put parentheses down for a minute. So I have 1 plus x plus something squared over 2 factorial plus something cubed over 3 factorial plus something to the fourth over 4 factorial. And that just keeps going on forever. And now I can take the substitute what I want to substitute into my function. So now I can take that minus x squared and substitute it in for x. So then I have, actually I'll do that in green, we have minus x squared, minus x squared, minus x squared, everywhere where I would have written down an x for the power series expansion of e to the x. And that gives me my expansion for e to the minus x squared. Now, we can simplify this a little bit, make this look a little nicer. So we have 1, and then we have minus x squared. And then I have minus x squared squared. That gives me a positive x to the fourth over 2 factorial. And then I have minus x squared cubed. That gives me a minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial. And then I have plus x to the eighth over 4 factorial. And we can see, even without having written down more terms, you can see that there's a pattern here. So the next term would be minus x to the tenth over 5 factorial. Even though I hadn't written it down before, I can see that this is how this would continue. And so this is our answer to our power series. If you like, you could write it also down in sigma notation. I don't necessarily expect you to do that in your homework problems, but let's see what this would look like. So this would be the sum from 0 to infinity. And then notice that we have an alternating series. So I have a minus 1 to the n to give me the alternating sign. And then I have powers of x, but I don't have all of them. I only have the even powers. So I can write that as x to the 2n. And then in the denominator, I have the n factorial that we also already had in the power series expansion of e to the x. And so either way, you can write down the answer um, expanded out like this or in sigma notation like that. Either way would be fine. So now that we have this expansion, we can do something with it. We can go ahead and we can use it to, for example, compute an integral that before we, we couldn't really um, compute, or rather we could have computed it using trapezoid rule or midpoint rule or something like that. 
But Power Series are another nice application for computing integrals or estimating integrals of functions that don't have nice, simple antiderivatives. And in example 4b, we are seeing one such example. So we are asked to approximate the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x squared dx um, using the first three terms of its power series approximation. OK, let's see. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x squared dx. And they really just want us to use the power series expansion. e to the minus x squared is equal to its power series for all values of x. And so we can replace the e to the minus x squared with its power series. So we have 1 minus x squared plus x to the, oops, x to the, excuse me, x to the fourth over 2 factorial minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial plus x to the eighth over 4 factorial, and we would be going on forever, dx. So this is actually equal. Um, so now we could integrate this term by term. This is a big, huge sum. So we can find the antiderivative of this big, long polynomial that goes on forever. The integral of the antiderivative of 1 is x. The antiderivative of x squared is minus x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of x to the 4th over 2 factorial is x to the 5th over 5 times 2 factorial. And then we have minus x to the 7th over 7 times 3 factorial plus x to the 9th over 9 times 4 factorial and so on. And we would evaluate this at 0 and 1. When I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 1 third plus 1 over 5 times 2 factorial minus 1 over 7 times 3 factorial plus 1 over 9 times 4 factorial and so on. And when I plug in 0, everything disappears. So this is really it. The integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to this long series right here. Now, we can't, well, well, maybe we could compute that exactly, but we were only asked to use the first three terms to find an approximation. So we are only using the first three terms. So we have, this is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 third plus 1 over 5 times 2 factorial is 1 tenth. And when you plug this into your calculator, you get that's approximately 0 0.7667. So this definite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x squared dx is approximately 0 0.7667. Like with any approximation, we would like to know how good is this approximation. And we already noticed that we have an alternating series. And fortunately for alternating series, let me write that down. So this is an alternating. We have a very easy um, error approximation. So if we are using the first three terms, in our approximation, then the fourth term is going to give us an estimate for how good our approximation is. So we know that our maximum error is 1 over 7 times 3 factorial, the first term in the series that we didn't use. And um, that is less or equal to 0 0.024, if you plug that into the calculator. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that our integral can be approximated with 0 0.7667. And that estimation is within an error 
of 0 0.024.